All right, so if we look at salts, and salt can be any ionic compound, we call them a salt. So it's not just NaCl, NaCl is table salt. It's the only ionic compound, the only salt uh, that you would likely encounter in a kitchen a couple hundred years ago. So however, any ionic compound can be called a salt. So metal, non-metal, or like metal and polyatomic ion, these are all examples of salts. And it turns out salts can either be acidic or basic or neutral. And you have to be able to look at a formula and identify which it is based on what we're gonna learn in this lesson. Or at least at this point in this lesson. So it turns out that we're gonna analyze the cations and anions separately. And it turns out that cations are usually acidic and anions are usually basic. So cations meaning positive ions, anions meaning negative ions. And so if I look at this, <clears throat> I've got cation, 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 they're probably acids. Anion, 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 they're probably bases. So, and you're supposed to remember the exceptions is the way this works. So, and it turns out that the exceptions are gonna be what we call negligible. They're not gonna be acidic or basic. Same thing over here, we've got some exceptions. So, that are gonna be negligible. So if you notice, I've kept the strong acids and strong bases up here because that is actually the key to remembering who the negligible ones are. So if you recall, we said that HCl is gonna dissociate 100% being a strong acid into H plus and Cl minus. And we also said that, you know, a lot of times we look at reactions as being reversible, but sometimes the strong acids we don't because it really goes 100% to completion. So, Keep in mind, let's say we did look at this reversible for a second. We said, yep, yeah, it's going forward, it's going backward, and then we realized, no, 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 it's a strong acid. It's not really going back. It's just 100% dissociation. And so as a result, we can get an implication out of this. So we see that HCl is definitely our acid, our H plus donor. And by definition, we would call Cl minus his conjugate base. What does he look like after he donates an H plus? Conjugate base. But in this case, we see that we're calling him the conjugate base of HCl. So HCl and Cl minus are a conjugate acid, conjugate base pair. But we also see that this guy has no ability to do the reverse reaction. HCl is so strong that it's just 100% to, to products. Cl minus has no ability to go back. Notice if he did go back, he'd be accepting an H plus. He'd be acting as a Bronsted base. So what we just learned is that Cl minus, even though we can call him a conjugate base of HCl, He's not a base. He has no ability to act as a base. We said in the last part of this lesson that the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Well, it turns out if you're one of these strong acids, you're so strong that your conjugate base is so weak that it has zero ability to act as a base. And we're gonna call it a negligible base. And so who are the negligible bases? Well, in this case, chloride's definitely one of them, but we've got I minus, Br minus, Cl minus, I'm gonna skip H2SO4 for a second and you'll see why in just a little bit. So, but NO3 minus, ClO4 minus, ClO3 minus, and then the conjugate base of H2SO4 is actually HSO4 minus, and we actually found out that just a little bit ago that he actually was a weak acid. So he's kind of the exception of all exceptions. Almost all anions are basic. These six are negligible, they're neutral essentially, they don't affect pH at all, which we'll learn about in the next lesson, but he's actually acidic. So definitely an exception. All right, so what about the cations? Again, most cations are acidic. And so if I don't know anything else about a cation, I just look at cations, I'm like, they're probably acids. So sodium, barium, aluminum, iron, they're probably acids. So except we know who the exceptions are. And the exceptions, just like the conjugate bases of the strong acids, so the anions associated with the strong acids are the negligible bases. Well, the cations associated with the strong bases, the group ones and the group twos, those are gonna be your negligible cations. And so in this case, we got lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and then magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. Cool, and because some people don't include magnesium hydroxide on their strong base lift, some people don't include magnesium here, some people still do, I'm gonna put it on there, it's the most likely way you're gonna encounter this. So, cool, there's your exceptions. It turns out it actually gets a little more complicated than this. It turns out if you wanted to get the exact rules and get you know all the exceptions, you'd find out that if it's a transition metal with only a plus one charge, 
It's negligible. And if it's, you know, one of the metals under the staircase on the right side of the periodic table with plus two or less, plus one or plus two, it's negligible. Well, we're never going to teach you those. So you might learn those in college, and even then you're probably not going to. Now, the transition metal one, we do teach our college students that, but you're not going to learn that in this high school class. Again, maybe in your AP class, maybe even then you might still not get it. So I put it in gray. I put it on there just to be on the safe side, cover my bases, but you're not on the hook for it. All right. So now we should be able to look at any salt. We can evaluate the cations. It's either an acid or it's negligible. We can evaluate the anions, it's either basic or it's negligible, or there's a very low chance it's an acid. And then we can figure out overall, is the salt acidic? Is overall the salt basic? Or is overall the salt neutral? And that'll kind of be the idea. And so what I usually do is group, you know, if I've got a multiple choice question, let's say like these four, and I say, you know, which one is acidic or which one's basic or which one's neutral? So I usually just evaluate all the cations you know, in serial fashion before looking at any of the anions, just so I can do it all at the same time. And I say, okay, for the cations, get rid of all the group ones, and all the group twos, cross them out. Sodium, yep, sodium's a group one, cross them out. Barium, barium's a group two, cross them out. Aluminum, though, is not group one or two. You don't get to cross him out. Iron is a transition metal. He's not group one or group two. You don't get to cross him out as well. And the ones you didn't cross out are acidic. And so I circled them in red. Then we'll go do the same thing with the conjugate bases, so these anions, and we'll go ahead and cross off the negligible ones. So iodide, bromide, chloride, nitrate, perchlorate, and chlorate. And in this case, chloride, yep, cross them off. So fluoride, no, don't cross them off. HF is not a strong acid. So perchlorate, yep, HClO4 was a strong acid, cross them off. Hydroxide, most definitely not. <laughs> so, and then anybody that's left is a base, unless it was this guy. So. All right, and then you go evaluate. If you crossed out both your cation and your anion, if they're both negligible, he's not an acid and he's not a base, well, then you have a neutral salt. It's not an acidic solution. It's not a basic solution. It's going to be a neutral salt. So if you crossed off your cation, but not your anion, you have a basic anion, well, then overall, that is a basic salt. And when you put it and dissolve it in water, it's going to give a basic solution, a solution that would turn litmus paper blue. So aluminum perchlorate, you have an anion that you crossed off, but you didn't cross off the cation. That cation's acidic, so overall this is going to be an acidic salt. So you've put a aluminum perchlorate in water, it forms an acidic solution that would turn litmus paper red. And finally here, this one's a little bit tricky here, and it's not usually what happens. We don't usually give you like a cation and an anion that you both haven't crossed off. However, if your anion's hydroxide, which is pretty much like the definition of base and stuff, well, then base is going to win here. So, but if it hadn't been hydroxide, like if you didn't cross out either one of these, it's not something we could ask you very easily without giving you some reference material that you could look up, some numerical values that actually would allow you to compare it. And that's just never going to happen in a high school class. So, but the only reason you should know this one is because hydroxide was the anion. And that's pretty much the definition of what makes a base a base. And so overall, this becomes a basic salt. Again, otherwise though, you should expect to either cross off both the cation and the anion, or just the cation or just the anion in designating your salt as either neutral, basic, or acidic. Now, if you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the more helpful things you can do to help other eyes find this video. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems on this, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.